Hi there. Uh, another update from PNR. So I feel we should check in every once in a while so that you can see where we're up to. For those just joining for the first time, we had a lock-on take place at 2.45 this morning. Uh, lots of planning for it. It was a very well-executed lock-on. Safely tucked away by the gates. Didn't cause any obstruction to tra traffic on this road. Can I just squeeze through for live stream? Thank you. The, um, yeah, so well-contained. You can see it's well-contained in there. Didn't cause any problems with traffic until the police came and decided that... Uh, Look at all that space they took, and they took all that space and uh, causing now one lane closure on Preston New Road. But again, not down to protest, just down to the police's choice of how much space they believe they need for the things that are happening. There's a protector removal, a protester removal team in there now. They're working on the very first pair. There are 13 people. This is in five pairs and three singles. So they're starting on the fire first pair. And it's been some time already. Um, I believe it's going to be impossible to cut all of these people out today. So I would imagine that once it gets too late, there could be a release. I'm not sure. Uh, but either way, there's no way they can continue. Uh, the cutting is going to take forever. They're very well built lock-on tubes and things. There are some welfare officers in there, but only four, which for 13 people is inadequate. And two of the people are in uh, wheelchairs and a couple of others have health issues. So the fact that there are only four is just really poor. You can see we've tried our best with putting umbrellas around people because they're very hot now because the sun's come out. You can see one lady already exposed. She should be given an umbrella by now. But there's not enough welfare officers to care for the safety of these people. You know, what we do is not illegal. It's not even unlawful. We have the right to peacefully protest. We're actually on a pavement where we're placed and we believe that we are justified in what we do. We know we're justified in what we do. Other live streamers today that you can catch up on. I've been here since 2.45, so I've done a few streams. Some of them agitated. There were a few moments of agitation, uh, mainly through excluding too many of us from the... Uh, not being able to provide the welfare that we, we wanted to do. And I suppose for those of us who get, spent the last two Sundays uh, working in the groups to plan for how this would be done, uh, we planned how we'd have managed the welfare. We've also been awake for like 36 hours. To then be excluded from the role you chose to play is quite frustrating to say the least. So yeah, I might have lost my temper a few times earlier. Uh, also, you see at the end, that last van, there were people watching from both ends, because if we can't be in there, at least we can bear witness. Um, but what they decided to do was bring that other van in. Again, that caused a huge ruckus, uh, because people did not want to move out of the way. We didn't see the point to that van. It was just there to block our view. It certainly served no purpose. And uh, you can see there's a lot of policing that's just doing nothing. Meanwhile, over here... So there's John and Bob... See that uh, still plenty of people here. People are coming and going. You know, it's been a very long night. A lot of these people have been up all night. Last night was rain and wind. Today's beautiful sunshine. As I say, I'm more deeply concerned that the lady there hasn't got an umbrella. But there's nothing we can do, you know, you're, you're ordered about, placed in positions and told what you can and can't do by the police. So, yeah, I tried to fight them every step of the way, of course, but there was nothing we could do to get back in there. Towers are still holding beautifully. Uh, the other tower down the other end is broadcasting music. Uh, those three have held this tower. You see Kieran Dunn up there. He's broadcasting on live stream a lot from the tower, which means you get a way better view of the lock-ons and how that's working. So find Kieran Dunn, that's D-U-N-N-E. Also, Frank Roberts has been here and he's been doing his live streams as well in his own inimitable way. And uh, there's other live streamers as well. I'd say this is the one that's serving no purpose at all. It's just here to block us. Yeah, it's very frustrating. I 
Frank's. She wants you all having biscuits in her brew before in a row. Not all of us. So it's been a long night, we're all a bit moody now. I know I certainly am. Maybe others aren't, maybe others are holding out better. But I'm in a vile mood. Mainly because I just know the person I was going to do welfare for, I can't do it. And I'm really concerned about that. Good thing is that today we've had, uh, well actually yesterday on the Sunday where we did the dry run throughs for the lock on. So we all got together, the welfare people live streamers and lock on people and we had a proper professional video crew come and video um, the preparations and interview each of the 13 people because one of the reasons that today was quite special was and you can see that sign across the way it's really hard for me to see this screen i'm sorry i'm not responding to messages but there's a huge sunny glare and that sign across there there weren't people away says the locals say no fracking and um Every one of the 13 in there is a local resident and we're trying to overcome that media, or well, the lie by the pro shale quadrilla and their PR company that says it isn't locals. Of course it's locals. You only have to come down and ask everybody where they live. They live locally. Yeah, there's some coming from other places. That's nice. That's called support and solidarity. But for us it's... Uh, I love and also in there are three councillors, so it's, it's really important to us that people understand that this is a local protest. And you know what, in the end, would it matter if it wasn't? You know, air and water know no boundaries. Once you pollute one lot, you pollute the lot. And also I think what we're acutely aware of here in Lancashire is that if we fail, we literally fail the country. Because here we said no, our council said no, and then, the Lanc- then Westminster overthrew our decision. So we have a really strong righteous position which is our parish council, our borough council, and um, the the residents in vast numbers of objection letters made it clear that we would not accept fracking in our community. And yet, uh, Sergeant Javid, the community secretary, overthrew our decision, and they inflicted this on us anyway. Clive Grunshaw, the Police and Crimes Commissioner for Lancashire, actually made a statement, and he said that uh, this and all that's happening here at Preston New Road and has been since January 5th we've been here all of this lies at the feet of Westminster and the blame and the cost because they knew this community said no and yet still they chose to push it through and you've got to expect fight back and that's what they're going to get everywhere in this country so to us this is the first uh, full on shale gas production site that's being developed in the country others are test wells but for a full production site this is the first one they're hoping to get built and it's also aimed to be a super site, uh, which is one of the largest pads they'll have ever built. Uh, they're basically using Lancashire as a guinea pig. Someone asked the other day, you know, what happens if you lose? And we explained that we don't lose because no one's going home until we succeed. And we don't care how long it takes. We have no choice in this. It's obligation. And uh, we're here for the duration. And we'll just keep coming back and fighting all the time. We're all going to hang on today because we need to applaud these brave protectors out you know, who've been stuck in there on these lock-ons. I think they nearly finished the first pair. But as I say, that's been a good, what, hour and a half, maybe. Maybe more. I don't know. My time perspective is lousy on 30, 36 hours without sleep, so... Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> Uh, we know that's been um, argued in court successfully a few times that Section 241 of the Trades Union Act is preventing people from going about their work. <laughs> so, and sometimes they use obstruction, they use all sorts of things, but inevitably, if you look up a uh, number of cases brought to court in the anti-fracking, for, uh, anti-fracking activities in the last six years, the vast majority will all be thrown out. It's a waste of police time, waste of court time, certainly a waste of our time. 
you know, when you think back and you look at six years of protests for the anti-fracking movement, not once has there been violence from us. It just isn't been. We don't, we don't commit violence. Yeah, violence is perpetrated against us. These people, all we do is we sit inconveniently at gates in the wrong position and we walk slowly in front of trucks. Or we... Uh, why are you saying they're sealed? <laughs> oh, you want to take them in? Ah. Yes, yeah, so we don't commit violence. We're just inconvenient because we slow to work down. And that's what our aim is. But I don't think you can hate us for that. And, you know, quite often we're treated like the criminals and it astounds us because we're not the bad guys. The bad guys the other side of that fence planning to drill and cause untold damage to Lancashire agriculture, tourism, the health and well-being of our children and our families and certainly the culture and structure of our community will change completely if this goes ahead. And so that was just a brief update. I'm going to go back offline now. So as I say, there are other live streamers. Check back at the beginning of this video for the names and I'll come back on again when there's more to report. Hey, Auntie.